Okay, so we uh, we had Nick, the chieftain down, the, the residential internet tank expert. You have anything bigger than this? That's absolutely pathetic. That's embarrassing. And he was a little leery about our tank. And um, we took it out in the last video, took it through the creek, and gotta admit, it was a little bit slow and a little bit sketchy, because if we broke, we'd be in big trouble. Tracks could fall off, clutch could give out. So we're fixing the tank. There she is. We're gonna fix all the problems all at once. And then this project is done and we'll never have to work on it again. You're gonna wanna watch this, here we go. to dig black muck and the thing sat for 10 years and fired right up so the coolest thing is the steering wheel actually works it's connected to the tracks <laughs> in the name of St. George have they done to that tank? AT643, I believe. It's gonna get bolted to that and then put into there. You need to see a giant winch on the front, don't we? It's part of it. This one's gonna be running just the winch. This is our backup in case we get stuck and the other engine quits and we are in the middle of nowhere. Every morning, guys. Uh, today's gonna be kind of a busy day and that kind of sucks because Everything inside is actually coming along really nice. The F-350, all the major work is done. The cab is back on and we're moving right along with that. My Silverado looks like a truck again, so that's almost complete. That's a good feeling when things start going back together again. But today we're outside and all we're gonna be doing is taking stuff apart. <laughs> I got Kevin's forklift just for the day. We got the tank cold start. See how that goes. We might actually wire it up so that we don't have to do this every time. Maybe a little more fuel. Oh, if it doesn't start, that ruins my whole day. Please start. I will kill you with ether. Get me ether. I'm not joking. Oh. That's it. I'm getting ether. Yeah, that's right. You're gonna go. First cold start of the year. Oh, the, the seat's wet. <laughs> Come on, girl, I just need to turn once. When you're turning, all you're doing is putting the brake on on one side. So all that's doing is flipping the clutch. pull this thing that sucked I thought it would roll but I was wrong <laughs> so I can either drive it out if I remember what reverse is so I guess I could just fight it back up again and drive it out that's not sketchy at all don't do this at home <laughs> So 
unfortunately the camera battery always dies uh, when you're in the middle of something. But I didn't die and uh, it's on the ground and that's over there, still running. Um, I think that engine is very much just put in with its own support, so like its own I-beams and that welded to the floor, that, that no, <laughs> no rubber or anything on it. Whereas our engine has its own frame, so ours will be easier to install. Okay, so a couple things that we need to address right off the bat. Because this four cylinder is way underpowered, we can't shift gears. We've got a manual transmission moving a manual transmission. And when we were driving the tanks, the actual tanks, they were able to get them up to speed enough that we could uh, disengage the clutch in the drive engine and shift the tank transmission. We can't get it up to speed enough because that engine is underpowered. And it's like taking off in 10th gear on a 10 speed bicycle. The only way we could possibly do it is to roll it down a hill. So my thinking is that we are going to replace that with an automatic. That way we can cycle uh, automatically through one through five gears. And if we want to pull a house down, we can put that transmission in a low gear. Or if we want to get to where we're going, we just stick it in a high gear and then cycle those five gears through. We'll probably pull that engine out, put it under the hood of the pickup and use this to run a winch. So I already got a pump on there. So um, we can utilize that tank and uh, run a winch in case we get stuck. Now, a lot of you guys said we should have saved 16 V71, and as cool as that would have been, that engine was scrap. We tried to sell it, nobody wanted to buy it, which is why it was in a scrapyard, which is why we inspected it, verified that all the cylinders were scored and broken, and then we disassembled it, further proving all the damage that was done even before we overheated it, and it wasn't any good. That engine weighed 12,000 pounds, We'd have to get a crane, a massive crane, to boom this thing in here, and we wouldn't be able to find an automatic that would be able to handle that amount of torque if it was in good shape. Working our way up with a 6V71 is a much better way to protect our very expensive Sherman parts, and if we get it moving fast enough, Nick doesn't even think we can keep the tracks on it, which are like $60,000 to replace the tracks. So. That is why we are doing what we're doing. You can comment down below if you think I'm nuts. There are plenty of 12V and 16V71s kicking around. Pete has two 16s and a bunch of 12s. There's a 12V in town with a generator on her. And that would be pretty cool to put a electric motor in front of the tank transmission. But that's later. We're gonna work our way up, have some fun with it. We'll keep going until we blow the tracks off the thing or wreck something in the transmission. That is a Marine V8, but that engine is toast. I need that number two bell housing off of that engine onto the V6. And then we are golden. Pretty straightforward to pull these off. Uh, anybody who doesn't know, um, got a four oil pan bolts, two little hidden ones back uh, in this corner here. And then um, just the ones around the outside. And then you gotta take this cover off and there's one sneaky hidden one right there. And then top her off, just the dowels that holds it, and a sledgehammer and a pry bar, and bam, off she comes. So the rear main seal is still flexible, that's good. It'll probably leak anyway. The gasket stuck to this one, and when I try to peel it off, it's cracking. So, I'm just gonna silicone the schnott out of it. That is gonna leak, 100%, but that's okay. Oh, this thing is really, really heavy. Like, really heavy. Oh, and it's Friday, it's late. And this is a really bad idea. Oh. That's not so bad. It's not bad at all. Put a couple bolts in there, we'll do them hand tight. Let it sit for 15 minutes, and then draw it tight tight. I used to have a ratchet. All right, it's mostly together. We'll uh, finish up in the morning, it'll be fine. Actually, I don't think it's even gonna leak. Look at that perfect little bead of silicone just squeezing out everywhere. Oh, mm, just perfect. Okay, so we got the adapter plate on. Here we go. I think I can handle it with my forklift. Um, that can lift this little 471 out, no problem. Air filter. Well, that was easy. 
fuel lines already disconnected. Drive shaft disconnected. Coolant lines, two bolts in the front, four bolts in the supports on the bell housing, and she's out. Here we go. My back tires weren't touching the ground. I've never seen dirt catch fire, but if it would, this is definitely the dirt to do that. We're gonna clean this all out uh, and then torch all the mounts off for the old stuff and get ready for the new stuff. Okay, so I measured the uh, spacings of where I need to bolt this thing down. Um, we can lob this back half off. We don't really need that. Um, but where it kind of ends up is the front is 20, 20 or 19? 19 and a half. Oh, 19 and a half. So that would put it right about here. And the back ones are 48 and then 53, which puts it just past there. So that's not ideal. I think what I'll do is I'll take the I-beam, which is just slightly taller than the I-beam sticking out through the floor there, and then bolt them down to this. And then once we have the transmission and I know my length of the drive shaft, um, we basically just need to put it where it's happy um, with a little bit of slide in and out on the yoke, and then we can just weld it down. So we'll mark it, we'll clean it off really nice then weld it in place. Still waiting for my transmission, which should be here any minute, but we'll see. And uh, if you guys don't know, Tape Boss is my little invention, a little piece that goes on the side of any tape measure. Uh, we have about 500 left and then I'm stopping selling them. Um, that was my invention, put patents on. We've got all videos on that whole process and we sold them in stores in Canada, but um, YouTube kind of takes over and we're having trouble keeping the orders up. If you want them, head to tapeboss.com right now and uh, you can go grab them there. They're kind of limited. Uh, there is an option where you can write something in uh, like a note. If you want me to sign them or whatever, I can do that. But uh, that'll be about it. This is the, we won't be doing it in 2022 anymore. So um, yeah, I'm gonna grab those I-beams, start drilling some holes. I think I'll lob that thing off first and then we'll go from there. Okay, so that thing weighs almost as much as the transmission. That That's some serious, serious, uh, I think that's half inch square tube. <laughs> no wonder the forklift could barely lift it. So, made that a little lighter. Make the brackets for underneath. Send that off to BNR where they can scrap it properly. And uh, we're rocking and rolling. Here we go. It's here. So, this is, a, I already forget what it is, AT643, I believe. It's gonna get bolted to that and then put into there. Oh, this is exciting. I'm gonna grab a knife, see where the torque converter ends up on the uh, ring gear. And they are so freaking awesome. Look at this. Um, they sent the yoke that I need. That bolts right up to our flywheel or our drive shaft. So that is one worry gone. Absolutely awesome. Here we go. That'll do. That'll do. So here's the issue. We've got a flywheel that used to have a clutch on it and that needs to go on our V6 Detroit. Now, Excalibur sent us this nice adapter ring that has the center holes for the studs for the torque converter to go through. The issue is that those studs hit the flywheel. So, I need to recess the flywheel so that the studs have a place to sit. So, I also need to drill six holes where I can attach that ring to the flywheel. And, and it might be a little bit complicated, but as long as I can uh, relay this to the machinist, you'll see what I mean when I get it done. I might have to make a couple trips to the machinist to let him know. Anyway, here we go.
Okay, so this is what I was waiting for on my flywheel. So, uh, the torque converter bolts go through these inside holes and I have to tighten it through these outside holes. So, essentially, it's going to sit on the torque converter like this. I'm going to have studs coming through from a torque converter, so I needed to machine an inch down for the proper clearances, just for a spot for those uh, studs and nuts to go. And then I needed to bring it in uh, 3 16 of an inch to get enough clearance uh, for the torque converter not to be bound up against the pump. And then I had to have them drill holes in the flywheel that lines up with this adapter plate. Now, the adapter plate came from Excalibur on the back side because half the bolt would have ended up on this ring. I had them mill just a flat surface so I can get a, a 1.5 millimeter by 70 millimeter Allen head bolt through here, M M8 I believe. If all my calculations are correct, we should just bolt this up. It'll be problem free. Got this on the inside here. We're gonna do some stuff to the engine afterwards, but first things first, let's pull the transmission off, put that flywheel on. If that's all set, then we can get Vince to weld this in place in the morning. If not, um, I can tell him to sleep in. I wake him up to tell him he can go back to sleep. Um, and then uh, worst comes to worst, we can still figure out some of this stuff tomorrow while it's in the tank. I can use my exercise climbing up and down. Here we go. Okay, so this is the scary part. Uh, bolting it up, making sure I have enough clearance because we gotta make sure that that torque converter spins free. Let's see if we can pop it in. And then we can get up the torque converter through one of those mounting bolts, see if it spins. Give it a little gap. Nice, that spins nice and free. No gap. You're kind of rubbing, but still spins nice and free, so I'm okay with that. Okay, so I did have to cheat just a little bit and uh, notch this out so I could get my bolts in. They're really long, so I couldn't make the corner to go around, but now I can uh, I'm just stick those in. So I'll just push on that and then spin the torque converter until I have contact. That should be a hole. I was close. Oh, it's nice when it comes together. I need a socket. We'll try to snug all those up. And we've got a automatic on a manual flywheel. Here we go. I took the cut off pieces of uh, I-beam, which are nice half inch, nice thick, um, and drilled nice neat holes to line up with the mounts, front and back, and we'll boom that in. That will straddle that I-beam in the middle. And then we are gonna have to shorten that drive shaft way back there in the dark that you can't see because that transmission, that awesome, awesome transmission, it's just a little bit longer um, and I can't push it forward far enough. So I'll put the other ones on there. I just gotta clean up the, the torch marks and give Vince something to weld to because down here there's not gonna be a whole lot. <laughs> um, we'll boom it in, we'll figure stuff out, we'll lift it back out again, we'll grind and then we'll weld. So that should be, that should be fantastic. Anyway, here we go. Okay boys, so I goofed here a little bit. Uh, I'm thinking this thing is about as heavy as Kevin's forklift can handle. So what I did was I chopped the end of the frame off. Now, after I started thinking about that, that was probably a mistake because this is a temporary engine plant. We'll be working our way up to different engines and I thought this frame would be pretty handy to lift everything in and out all at once. It's got the rad, transmission, everything in there. And for weight savings, because it's all that forklift can lift, is I cut that end of the frame off. But if I want to put a bigger engine in it, that frame would actually be pretty handy. So Vince, can you weld that back on? 
He's a man of few words. Anyway, we've got everything nice and cleaned out on the inside here. Uh, we're gonna boom this in and then just see exactly where everything lands up. Uh, forget about those four by fours. Okay boys, you gotta admit, that looks way better than the old setup. <laughs> I can't believe how heavy this stupid thing is. We got, uh, it's up pretty high, so the drive shaft is up pretty high. So what we can do is just lob the back of that uh, rear mount off. We're just gonna take an inch and a half off and that'll tilt it down quite a bit. That'll help with our drive shaft. Vince is welding the yoke. Um, he cut the old yoke off. We'll measure where the drive shaft goes. We'll chop the, the drive shaft off, so I'll remove that. And then we'll boom it back out again. We've got everything marked where we're gonna grind. I got uh, some cables from Princess Auto to run the automatic up into the cab, the cable, and also a better throttle pedal. Uh, the e-brake is funny and great, but we're gonna try and hook it up to the actual uh, gas pedal. We got some nice shielded wire so we can run our oil and temperature sensors right up, try to get the dash working, um, but we'll see. So you'll have to see that in a separate episode though. For now, remove the drive shaft. Here we go. Okay, so I just torched uh, an inch and a half off the bottom and that works pretty slick because that's the side plates for the back of the 471 that would go on the bell housing and the mounts for the back so i can reuse those and just uh weld that engine in the front on that side so clean this off we got some c-channel from uh vnr and we'll cut that to the right height with the little lip on the bottom and that'll be super secure for uh this one there we go okay so we got our coolant lines it even says on there to cooler. We'll mount that right in the very front using uh, the fan just to pull the air through. This was meant for the F-350 but it was just too big so we ordered one that was just like three inches shorter and a little bit longer. We don't need the fan for this one so we'll pull this off, throw the cooler in, get Vince to weld the fittings on there and then we'll get VNR to crimp the lines so that is nice and neat. It's made a quick little bracket to mount the transmission cooler. Bolt it into there, a little bit of angle iron from VNR. Bob's your uncle, here we go. I went to VNR and uh, had the hoses crimped. I got some fittings and brazed them to the cooler. So our cooling is all done. Um, I got my dipstick in, even though I'll bolt it up against, but it's nice putting the chains here, so I'm just going to leave that for now. Um, I'm not going to put fluid in it because we're putting too much weight on this thing, and that forklift is all it can do to lift this. So I imagine this is about three, four thousand pounds. I moved my filter housing from down there to up here. That'll still be a primary filter, so this filter is basically useless but it's nice to have the two hoses coming out. It acts more like a T than anything else. The other housing was broken and the one fitting broke off inside, so she's toast. I took the alternator off because that's 24 volt. Uh, I'm gonna run to VNR and see if they have another one just in the yard somewhere with the same bolt pattern. We'll just bolt that right back up again. The belts seem fine, so we're gonna leave those alone. I just need to replace a couple of uh, coolant hoses yet and then we're just about ready to boom it back in again um one oil fitting was leaking so i just gonna plug that we've got sensors everywhere because of the generator so i think this is just your main oil pressure sensor but there's another one and another one and another one we got coolant sensor here and we got coolant sensor here um or sorry this isn't your coolant this is your normal clothes normally open for temperature we don't need that so we'll unhook that i'll put a manual gauge we can take that one out of the bronco and plug it into there and then have a manual gauge uh but we're still going to hook these up to the gm so um we can monitor stuff inside the cab we're gonna put the fast underneath the bed of the truck i think it looks proper there and that'll work nice with the uh, fuel tank in the back of the truck we're also going to put the hydraulic tank underneath the truck and then I'll run the um, the 471 had a pump hanging off the back. We'll put that pump on yet. 
and drive it off the back. We can use that one to kind of as a spare pump, but I think uh, that pump was out in the element, so it's probably not up to full capacity. So figure it can run the power steering. Um, why not have power steering in our tank? If we change that to hydro boost, we could have power brakes, which, you know, I'm probably gonna do that too. I'm gonna run to Tuesday and grab a hydro boost and see if we can get power brakes on there too yet. Why not? I'm still going to put a bigger pump on the back of the 471 and put that one under the hood. So lots accomplished, lots more to do. Here we go. It really annoying cat i know i'm working on a detroit you gotta get over it you gotta let it go what what do you want uh this is the yoke that drives the tank transmission and i just took a caliper and brand new caliper and an old rotor and machined uh where the yoke would sit on the one side i made an indent on the other side so this fits right nicely inside centered with all the bolt holes lining up like so and then when i actually hit the brake pedal we're actually going to have some sort of brakes okay so new dilemma if i leave the i-beam right there and then just notch a little bit for the yoke to spin and then drill a hole for the caliper then it's done but then if we ever have an issue with the transmission i can't ever get that out so I think what we'll do is we'll cut a couple inches off on either side and then weld a bracket to the side and then bolt this one in place. So if need be, we can uh, unbolt it. Who knows, the brake might not even work. I'm just making all of this up as I go. There's like, none of this has ever been tested. Can a single brake caliper slow down a 20 ton truck tank? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so remember when we did the, uh, what to look for when you're buying a used forklift? Well, that back right tire was a little bit flat. Now it's a lot flat. So that kind of puts a damper in the uh, project. I was hoping to have that boomed in and have Vince weld it while I'm off doing other things, but now we gotta wait. So it's not an air tire, it's just full of foam and all that foam is broken down. So hopefully that's not gonna take too long. But uh, yeah, that's how projects go. One delay after another, and you can't always predict them. That's just the way it goes. So we do other things, here we go. All right, one last ride in the Bronco for the year. I'll put her away, get ready for paint. And she's getting put to use because that is a giant wench for the tank. Earning her keep. We'll be doing that after we paint it, but hey, might as well treat the truck like a truck, right? Okay, so we've got our winch, a couple things to consider. Uh, this does need to be at the bottom because there's oil in here, an oil level there, and it says something important there. Caution, do not, and I can't read the rest. And I could scrape the paint off, but it's a lot of work. Anyway, we've got to mount this thing. Now, ideally, I'd like it on the front here, except this is cast and really, really awkward. Um, not not great. We could also weld it to the bottom of those two I-beams. That would keep it even more protected, but then you wouldn't know it has a winch. Like, you need to see a giant winch on the front, don't we? It's part of it. How are we gonna do this? I gotta think this through. Here we go. Okay, so that's about the most that I can do in the shop. We got our transmission cooler mounted, the line's nicely rooted. Uh, we've got the fuel filter fixed. We're gonna add that fast. Transmission's on, bolted on. We got a auxiliary hydraulic pump put on. Now I hope that still spins the right way. Otherwise I'm in trouble. Uh, yeah, we'll worry about that later. That's, that's future Rich's problem. Put the start, made sure that the starter fit. Got my starter bolts ready. I didn't have to notch it just a hair to clear the air box because remember our adapter plate is shorter. Our bell housing is shorter, the flywheel's smaller. So let's figure out, still waiting on an alternator, still trying to figure that out. Might just have to convert that 24 volt to a 12 volt, bring it to town and get that done. I don't know, I don't care. We're gonna do that later. Um, right now, we're gonna boom it in place and then uh, get going on the 471 because Vince needs something to weld. So here we go. Okay. Oh, 
All right, so uh, we got the other engine in the tank. Uh, I got it done just before it got dark. A little bit of just messing around, trying to get it centered, making sure I'm in the right spot for the drive shaft. And while we're at it, I figure we'll take a look at this one. Um, this one's gonna be running just the winch, even though I think that hydraulic pump on the other one's probably big enough to run it. This is our backup in case we get stuck and the other engine quits and we are in the middle of nowhere. So I'm gonna pull that transmission off. I think the smoky clutch bandit is struck again and this clutch is completely roasted, but that's okay. We're not using it anyway. So it was all I could do to get that slave cylinder do, and I either couldn't get it in gear or it was partly slipping. So we got enough just for one run, just to kind of see what the thing all needed. And now this will go straight to VNR. Here we go. Careful, Katie. Shouldn't walk under equipment. Clutch. There's a happy mouse in there that got rudely awakened. Kitty, you're gonna love it. It's full of rodents. Kind of disgusting. All right, that's filthier than a Bob Saget comedy sketch. That's for daddy. Oh, so gross. <laughs> that would be my clutch. Just not sure if that's clutch material or like an animal that got caught in the clutch when I when we fired it up for the first time. Either way, I don't think it left the factory that way. Let's pull that clutch off and see what she's like. But she was slipping a bit. Oh, that's not so bad. Attach her drive plate to that somehow. And then, nice, oh, I did have one and then I sold it. Let's see if we can figure that out. Here we go. Oh, why is everything so heavy? You see all the oil in the, coming out the exhaust. <laughs> she was bad. <laughs> Good enough to run a winch. Here we go. Another problem we got with this thing is that it's too long by a lot. Not, not even a little bit, like a lot. <laughs> it doesn't fit under the hook unless we get rid of the fan. We don't need a fan. That's just, it's too much anyway. Luckily the water pump is done internally, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, that spins off the uh, blower. So we can get rid of this fan assembly, no problem. We'll uh, get rid of this pulley and then we'll just put some pusher fans on it. Uh, electric on the front, because, yeah, why not? Here we go. Okay, so a big oopsie that I didn't think of before when we kind of rough test fitted this is that the frame of the truck sits right here. <laughs> and it just, oh, I'm a bit off. To one side, I can, maybe if I, if I notch, the whole side of the frame and just use the bolt, it will just slide past. But I have to move it over. I will, it will squeeze right in between. I think that's what we'll do. It'll be pretty easy, actually. I gotta move this over here. I'm not 100% centered. Not a big deal. Um, for you guys worried about us cutting up that uh, crew cab, I know they're getting up in value. That thing's really rough, so. We're just gonna make it fit this project. And it is now snowing. Nice, here we go. Just cut a, a half inch slit through here, uh, drop the winch down in, turn it, and lift up just so the top sticks through. That way we can weld it to the top here, and we can weld it at the bottom and even on this lip here. So that should be that should be pretty strong. 
And then I realized, you know what, this is a real pain in the butt to work on because everything is down low. Even like this, it's a pain to work on. So the truck just is bolted on the back and then these two on the front here. So I think why not get a couple cylinders? We've got a hydraulic pump anyway and then just make it so the whole truck can lift up. That's why my projects take so long. Okay, so if the plan works, we're gonna boom that in. It should just fit in the vent in the hole the vents is standing on. And then we'll drop it down underneath, we'll turn it, and then we cut slits in the in the I-beam rails there where those two plates on the side will will slide up in and it'll work just perfect, right Vince? Oh <laughs> steady. We haven't been bad really for for no plans or blueprints or just rough measurements. Oh, just, ah, it'll be fine. Okay, so that worked out really, really well, except then I changed my mind. Um, I think we're gonna cut the bottom lip of the I-beam off and go right up to the top one there, just because the cable is down just a bit. So then it's, it's basically, if we're trying to pull out or pull something out, we're pushing down on that a lot. We can put rollers in that there, but I think for the time it takes, we can just cut the rest of that out, lift it up and weld it up. That's too bad, because everything else went really, really nice. It uh, went together right where I wanted it to. And uh, but then I changed my mind. That's the way it goes. Okay, so I changed my mind again because I put the cable out and it actually doesn't rub. It's actually nice. Um, it goes right over top of that one, under that one. Not much clearance, but that's the way she goes. So we'll put a roller on the front there and maybe some pin or something that goes down. Or would it be better coming through the side? Beam? If the spool goes down, it changes the height, then it could actually start pulling on that I beam too. I think this is about the best. <laughs> All right, we've got brakes, we've got a winch. Vince is gonna finish welding that up uh, tomorrow. We've got drive shaft, automatic transmission. We've got a cooler, fast, mounts all finished and welded up. That's where we're gonna stop the video for now. Next video will be all about the crew cab. We're gonna spruce that up. Tuesday had a parts truck, so uh, really nice to just swap some parts to make that thing uh, actually nice to drive and be inside. Uh, and then we'll put that back on here and hook up all the little extras that we've uh, thought of along the way. So a uh, quick reminder that all the repair videos on the tank and on the cab over are going to be on this channel, the heavy duty channel. All the driving of it will be on the main channel. We were hoping to make videos earlier on this, but um, it was just in such bad shape. It really was just a worn out tank with an underpowered worn out engine that barely worked. Um, and we finished it off. So um, that's what this channel is all about. This is really no plan or anything. Just kind of tackle it one thing at a time and you should do the same because if you're not filthy, you're not rich. Here we go.